Hey everybody, it's Ron, and today I'm going to be reviewing part two of the Dune graphic novel adaptation. But before I start, I'd like to let you know that I have a review of part one that you can check out in the description if you haven't seen that yet. So this is the second part of three graphic novels, and part three will finish the first Dune novel. It's tough to review this particular section because I knew what I was getting into from knowing the book pretty well at this point. And if I had to criticize the story of Dune, I would say that a lot of the desert scenes with Paul and Jessica tested my patience a little bit because they go on very long and even though they're necessary, I felt that they take up so much of the later part of the book that other locations and characters sort of get sidelined. And I felt the same way reading this adaptation of this particular section of the novel. That's not really the fault of Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert because they adapted it pretty faithfully, but I knew going into it that I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much as part one where we have a good balance of the Atreides side of things as well as the Harkonnens and it really opens the world up before getting more secluded to the desert in this section. So while I have my own personal problems with that, I will say that the artwork by Raul Allen and Patricia Martin was really solid again. It's still not my preferred style for a Dune book, and I talked about this a little bit in my review of part one, but there's no denying that it's well done. What I appreciated the most was the attention to detail with background characters. A lot of the times artists kind of skimp out on the backgrounds in monthly books but you can tell the artist had more time because the detail is great especially in these siege parts the coloring especially stands out this time around the glow globe effect is particularly amazing it looks like my book is lighting up so hats off to the colorist on that the quality of the book itself is still really great, just like the first one. It's really comfortable to hold, and the material under the slipcase is nice as well, and can almost stand on its own without it. The artist got a little more creative with the panel layout, so that was interesting to read this time. It's a very fluid read, and I think I understand why they went with this style a little bit more now, because this book is meant to get new people into the story of Dune, so it needs to be easy to understand visually and with the writing. Comics are very different than a novel and I think they understand this really well because it never gets too wordy but also doesn't lose much of the concepts from the novel and I bet that's not easy to do so again hats off to the team. I do have a couple gripes with the character designs this time around. I didn't love the look of Stilgar and again, I guess it just comes down to me not picturing him looking like that when I read the books. So it's not the end of the world, but that definitely took a second to get used to. I also didn't like the look of Lady Fenring. She has this modern hairdo with the side of her head shaved, and it took me out of it because Dune should be timeless, and I think something like this could date the book. I don't know, I, I feel like Dune is so far into humanity's future that things should either be weirder or more traditional since they've gone back to a feudalistic society in this world. That's just my opinion on it. I know for some people that probably wouldn't be a problem at all. And it is a small thing, but I guess that's the main problem when you have a clear image in your head about what you think this world and the people who inhabit it look like. I would still recommend this to hardcore Dune fans, but I do kind of want to go back on something I said in the first review. I think I said this might be a good way for new fans to get into the story before reading the actual book, and I think you should read the book first and then read this because I don't think this is the best first impression of Dune. I think you should experience the full Dune novel first and then dive into this adaptation and make your own mind up about the art and the way they retell the story. Because I know what happens already, I think I'm going to enjoy part three a lot more. And although I had some problems with this particular volume, like I said, it's still worth the buy. The book itself is of the highest quality 
And even though it's not my preferred art style for this material, once again, there's no denying the level of detail and dedication that went into this. It's definitely not a rush job, and you can tell everyone involved really cares about the source material, so that's great to see. It also looks great on my shelf next to the first part, so I can't wait to have all three, and I hope they continue with other books as well. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content, and check out my Dune playlist if you want to catch up on all of my previous Dune-related videos. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Ron here with a quick announcement. When I started this channel, I was reading and reviewing the Dune books and other sci-fi related material. And most of you might not know that I'm also a musician. So when I was reading these sci-fi books, I started to get inspired and decided to make my own soundtrack to use for my videos. And now I'm excited to tell you all about the first volume in the Ron Reviews original soundtrack collection. This album includes the first 17 tracks featured on my channel, and it's available now exclusively on Bandcamp. Be sure to check the description of this video for the link to the album. Thanks so much for the support so far. I know I'm just starting out, but I hope you're having as much fun as I am. So check out the original soundtrack volume one on Bandcamp. This music is great if you want something moody and atmospheric to listen to while you're reading some science fiction. I think you're going to love it. Thanks.